and uh, we were really blessed. I there's a lot going on, as you can imagine, yes. and so um, was very fortunate to have all of you come, share stories, be with the children, um, and and I'm reminded of why I'm here. A lot of my day is very busy, and I interact with hundreds of individuals every day and make a lot of decisions. And I realize in coming here that I think God wanted me to just sit down and listen mm -hmm. and connect with people. And so listening to their story, like there was a connection in every story, right? And it's almost therapeutic. It's therapeutic for us to speak and tell parts of our story and it's therapeutic for us to listen and make connections, whether it's something that we have in common or whether it is something that um, we have a shared experience with. So I just want to say thank you. I understand why um, God had me come here today. And so it's been really interesting to be quiet and sit and listen. I had a couple other things I had to take care of when I came in, um, but that's the nature of the business that I'm in. It's um, 24 hours, and it is what it is. It's what I signed up for. Um, my name is uh, Brian Wallace, and I'm the proud principal of Lake Elkhorn Middle School here in Howard County. I'm also a youth minister at my church, which is Mount Pisgah AME Church in Columbia, Maryland. Um, and so some of you may be familiar with that as well. Um, but I, I, I'm, I wanna show up in the space, um, just as Brian, because what I'm, I'm realizing is, and I've, I've had some remarks, but just listening to everyone, it's like, let me speak from the heart. And I want to show up as Brian because, you know, we all have these titles. We all have these things, uh, these descriptors that um, either say something about who we are or something that we've prescribed to do. So I'm a principal. You know, someone's a CEO, someone could be a police officer or president. We have all these things. What I'm realizing as I sit here today is that the most important description for all of us is that we're human beings. Mm -hmm. We're human beings. And when we recognize that we're human beings, what we come to realize is that titles, while important, they don't matter. Because when we can see each other as human beings, sisters and brothers, and we see that we have this common bond where we have this physical body, right? If I said, hey, have you ever tripped before? Have you ever had knee pain before? Have you ever hurt your back? Have you ever fell out of bed? Like these are all things that some of us have experienced as we age and get seasoned as well, right? Um, and, and, and there's also other things that we have common experiences with. If I said, hey, you know, what's it feel like to hold someone's hand or to have the comfort and support of a close friend? These are all commonalities that we have as humans, regardless of race, gender, non-gender, orientation, whatever you believe, regardless of those things, these are things that we have as a common experience. And so as I keep my remarks brief today, I feel compelled just to share with you that as a human being, one of the things that I've realized for me is that I love kids and that's why I do what I do. So I grew up in New Jersey. Um, my mom had me when she was 18. She'd actually married my dad and she was set to go to college uh, but she realized that uh, the family didn't have the funds to send her. And so she went and married my dad, left the house. They had me. And as many of us know, relationships are hard. And love is hard. Marriage is hard, especially when you're young. And so uh, we, they decided to go separate ways. We came back, and I grew up in New Jersey. And so being in New Jersey and having experience with a lot of different things, having experience with poverty, having experience with struggle, having experience with a very strong mother who was trying to find her way in our world. 
and the connections that I was hearing from everyone. You know, my grandmother as a Gen Xer, my grandmother was a big part of my life. And so I spent so much time with her. My God, she was one of those definitions of love for me because she spent time with me. We used to watch the stories, the bold and the beautiful, and the young and the restless, and all those shows. And, and you know, we used to watch uh, The Price is Right, and one of my favorites, Wheel of Fortune. And, I, you know, I'm so shocked that when I was a kid, the same host is still hosting Wheel of Fortune, right? <laughs> But we used to watch those things together, and I think the biggest form of currency and of love was time. And we spent so much time together. And so for me, as I grew up, um, I made connections with what Alex was saying, and what Coach Harrell was saying, and what Juanita was saying, because I gravitated to sports. And sports really saved me. My first love was music. But sports really saved me because it gave me an outlet to channel energy. And I loved basketball, so listening to one of these stories about basketball. Um, when I got to high school, uh, I played basketball and baseball, but then I got cut from basketball. And that is one of those milestones. We all have milestones. That's one of those milestones that really changed my life because it changed my trajectory. It changed my friend group. It changed a lot of what was happening for me. And so I wound up running track. So listening to her tell her story about switching to track was really funny because I thought I would never run track because <laughs> they work very hard. And I would be in the baseball field. And as an athlete, I was very much going off of the talent that I had been given. And I'll be in the baseball field and I look over at the track and they're running <laughs> circles, running, running. And so I thought I'd never do that, but I did. And I started off and I sucked. It was very bad. It was extremely bad. I lost a lot over and over again. Um, girls made fun of me. Kids are cruel, they can be cruel sometimes. And I remember, I'll never forget, and, and this is a sprinkle of love, I'll never forget it was at the end of a practice. I was done. I was ready to quit. I was done. I hadn't been winning, I hadn't been doing anything. And one of the captains came up to me and he noticed I was down after the practice and he said, hey, what's going on? And I said, hey, I'm done. And this is the first thing I wanna share with you. You never know the words that you're gonna speak to someone and how they'll impact their life. He said, hey man, you can't quit. It's hard, but you gotta keep going. And there was something about that, maybe it was because he was a leader, an older kid, maybe because he said it with sincerity and with love. And the very next track meet, my coach put me in a very different race. And I did okay. I didn't quit. Long story short, I continued with that and um, eventually became a captain on the track team. And we won a state championship. Wow. And so I share bits and pieces of that story because there's trials and tribulation and when life really gets us down, we want to quit. And uh, I, I will never forget the work and the discipline that that sport taught me. And I'll also never forget the adults who were around, my coaches, the teachers. Even when I was in middle school, these adults poured into me I didn't like to go home all the time. I had a bunch of issues going on at home, um, but I had a very loving family, don't get me wrong, but as a kid, just growing up as a Gen Xer, um, you know, there's a lot going on. And so, uh, but there were so many people there. And that's why I work with kids, because I believe that kids need trusted adults mm -hmm. to help them navigate this very vulnerable adolescent state, okay? And so for me, a fast forward, track actually got me to school. I got a partial scholarship. It actually is the reason why I'm down here in Maryland. And so uh, track got me to school down here and, and I came down here and I majored in economics. So when I saw Alex, I was like, yeah, you look like a finance guy. Because <laughs> uh, he, he had the look, he had the demeanor, he had the energy. 
Um, and so for me, fast forward, I was in uh, corporate America. I was doing some internships. I was doing very well. And uh, I experienced even some corporate politics at a very young age, but I realized I wasn't happy. And I'll never forget, I was sitting in an interview with a very prestigious pharmaceutical company and they were telling me all the things they wanted me to do. And I just had this out of body experience. <laughs> and it was like the Charlie Brown, wah, 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 wah. <laughs> and I'm sitting there and I, um, I said, yeah, I can't do this anymore. And so they called and offered me this job, and I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm thankful for the offer, but I have to respectfully decline. And I'll never forget, the woman said, uh, are you sure? Do you want to think about that? Because people aren't used to offering a job and somebody just saying no. Um, but I realized at that moment, um, in a conversation with one of my best friend's mothers, who was a guidance counselor, um, that I wasn't going to do that anymore, and I was going to take a different path. And so I got a job that didn't pay nothing, working with kids. And so the rest was history. I went back, I finished my degree and started subbing and got into education and all that. I actually work security, which is a whole nother story. Um, but we, I share those things to say, we all have these different paths. And when you look at people, you never know what their story is. And you never know how many things we have in common with each other and the things that we just share. And so what I wanna to say to you today is, as I was reflecting on love, and I had some prepared remarks, but as I was reflecting on that, and as, as Juanita kind of ran it down, like to learn with regards to learning our community and learning who the people are, and the O with regards to keeping an open heart, and for me it's an open mind as well, right? And then volunteering, and then empowering people to do the same. For me, it reminded me that love is a choice. It's a decision. Those in the room who've been married for a long time, you realize that. It's a choice. It's a decision. And we have to be intentional with that. And so I work with kids every day, and I feel like my job is to spread love and be that for them and to turn on their light so that they can go and turn on the lights of others. And so what we did today at school was just planting seeds. Every day we're planting seeds. And I love planting seeds with the children. And I love the fact that every day is a new day. Working at a middle school, one day they hate you. <laughs> then the next day they love you. And the next day they're crying. And the next day they're like yelling and excited. And, and that's the, the roller coaster of middle school just because of that time, no matter how much technology advances, no matter how much the world advances, there are still some things that are gonna be very common that are the same. And that's the thing with children. And so I love working with middle schools. I have experience with high school and other levels, but I love working with middle schoolers because it's a time where you can really plant the seeds to let them know what's happening. I met with a girl today who had to serve uh, lunch detention for something that she was assigned. And she asked me for some water. I keep some water bottles in my um, office because if you work at a school, you keep snacks and you keep water mm -hmm. for the kids because they're always hungry or snacking. And so she was coming, she came in. I said, come into my office. She came into my offices and I was right in her past. And I said, you know what? I said, uh, you know what I'm proud of? And she said, what? And I said, I'm proud of the fact that even though I have a few suspensions already this school year, that you're not one of them. And this is a child who, for all intents and purposes in the previous year, has had a lot of trouble and a lot of disciplinary action. And I said, I'm very proud of you. I'm proud of that. I said, but now that we're here, now we got to focus on something different. I said, so I want you to start to focus on what it is that you want to do. What is something positive that you want? Now, this is a student whose mother has passed away. And so the pain of the death of a parent, we all respond differently. And so I said to her, I said, you know, life sometimes is not fair and it'll deal you different things. I said, but you still have the power to choose what it is that you want to do. I said, that pain may not go away, but it doesn't have to destroy the life that you have. And just in that little three minute conversation, 
She was engaged, she was listening, I could tell. And then I signed her pass and then sent her on her way. But that's what we do every day, we plant those seeds. And she may make a mistake, she may do something else, you know, whatever it is, but she's got a fresh start and that's what love is. Every day it's a fresh start. My favorite book says love is patient, love is kind, love is not boastful all this categorical things about love. But my favorite part about it is, is that love never fails. And if there's something that I want to say to you today, as I begin to close, I want to remind all of you that we all have a story. Continue to tell your story because you give permission to others to turn on their light and tell their story. Continue to know that the words that you speak to a child, to a friend, to someone at bingo, to someone in the bathroom. You never know how it's gonna make an impact on them. We're all here to plant these seeds of hope, these seeds of love. But my question for you and my charge is will we be ambassadors of love? Will we be ambassadors of love? Will we be champions of love? Or will we sit on the sideline? Will we inspire others as human beings? Will we continue to see our neighbor as human beings? With all the war, all the hate, all the division that's going on right now, this world is set up to divide us. And I'm so thankful that God brought me here to make connection, to see that as human beings, when we come together through love, we can accomplish anything. Thank you. Thank you.